Take your place in the coaching lounge. Be inspired by discussions with motivational guests, compelling speakers, key people of influence and models of success. Learn unique processes, strategies and tips that will transform your life. Tune into previous episodes on www.thecoachinglounge.co.uk. Like our page on Facebook via The Coaching Lounge. Follow us on Twitter at Satellite Coach. Thank you for joining your host, Rebecca Gordon, in The Coaching Lounge. Tune in, relax, engage and transform your life now. Now. Welcome to The Coaching Lounge once again and I am your host Rebecca Gordon and today we are welcoming five-time entrepreneur, published author and business and work-life balance expert and founder of Zest Business Consulting, Jennifer Martin. Jennifer's passion has always been helping her clients align themselves with their inner desires and move quickly into the most enjoyable and financially satisfying versions of their lives imaginable. Today, Jennifer will share with us a little bit about spiritual and practical approaches to growing your own business and to make sure that you're doing all that you can to live your joy, to live your passion, and to tap into your greatest wealth, but understanding how to grow your business from the inside out. And these are some of the principles that I'm really looking forward to hearing um, Jennifer discuss with me today, um, because as a business owner, it can. there are lots of challenges. You know, a business can be fraught with challenges when you're starting off, you're trying to proceed through and learn and make Make mistakes and what I do want to draw from Jennifer today and we will discuss this within the next um, 45 minutes to 50 minutes is how to maintain that balance and that spiritual approach to doing business welcome to the coaching lounge Jennifer Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here today. Excellent. Okay. And um, Jennifer, you have just returned from a wonderful place. You've been on vacation. Tell us about that. I have. I'm, uh, I spend a lot of my time in my work helping people create businesses that they really enjoy. And a part of that is making sure that your business supports your life. So I told everybody I was off enjoying or practicing work-life balance. And I went to the island of Kauai. Wow. Yeah, it was yeah. glorious. Okay. And that's um, near one of the islands near Hawaii. Exactly. It's one yes. of the Hawaiian islands. Yes. And uh, I, if anyone's in the area, I'd highly recommend it. it it's uh, just one of those places where, number one, they have almost, almost every weather temperature. So with every 15, 20 minutes, you can go from rainy to sunny to, you know, not really storms and snow and things like yes. that. But it's, it's just lush and green and gorgeous. Wow. And you can't miss the, the beach and the palm trees anywhere you go. I mean, yeah. it's just heavenly. It, it sounds like um, nature, you know, every aspect mm -hmm. of nature. Yes. Um, it just recalls, it reminds me of when I went to Ghana the last time I went. And oh. it, it just seemed, like you said, that word lush, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the colors, the, the plants, the flowers and the greenery were so much more vibrant <laughs> than Absolutely. over here yes and the, and the fruit right yes uh, <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> yeah I mean real food it tasted like yeah. you know real fruit but um what um, we, yes we, we've been trying to set up this um, recording for um, a, a few weeks now and I must say your out of office reply that I received is one of the best I've ever read in fact it's the best <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to share it with the listeners because sure. it, it reads like this. I'm out of the office today practicing work-life balance in beautiful Kauai. If you would like to learn how to take more vacations, pay off more bills and spend more time doing what you love, leave me a message. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I heard from probably I was gone about 12 days and I heard from about four people who said, I'm going to steal this from you. Is it okay? And I said, 
Go for it. You know, well, I you, encourage, yeah. encourage balance for everybody. You, you got a fifth here then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, before we talk about the spiritual approach to business, I just want to find out more about you, Jennifer, because sure. you're the founder and the CEO of Zest Business Consulting. And in my mind, the word zest conjures up visions of vitality, freshness, and being alive. Where did you get the idea for Zest Business Consulting and what exactly is it about? Well, for starters, Rebecca, thank you so much because I loved your explanation, which is great. Right. And I'll tell you, I've been, I've owned five businesses and in between owning those businesses, I have been a business consultant or a business coach for, you know, from corporate jobs all the way down to solopreneurs, like a little, I won't say little, but, you know, perhaps it might be a massage therapist with their own business, all the different sizes and in between. And a couple years ago, uh, I was hired by a company called E-Myth. Um, some people have heard of a book called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Oh, well, yes. They're a huge worldwide business coaching company, and they hired me to come aboard and be one of their business coaches. I had the great fortune of learning close to 160 business development lessons through them and teaching their clients all around the United States. So it was a it was a grand opportunity, great fun. I met some incredible people. And when my relationship came to an end with them, uh, I realized I had the opportunity to go back and do what I had been doing because before that I owned my own business consulting company. And I thought this time around, the primary focus is going to be about exactly what you said. I wanted people to know that you could have it all. Mm. You could have a business that was financially rewarding, that was thriving, and you could have a life that you enjoyed and do work that was meaningful and still had enough time to enjoy your life. And that's a big, tall order for some people. They, they can figure out how to make a good business, but then their life just, you know, gets mm. sucked into their business. They don't have a life. They have a business life. Yeah. And then, you know, or the other way around, or they're constantly running, running, running to try to find new clients and try to make more money, and they just can never find the balance. Mm. And there can be a way that you can have fun and excitement and zest and adventure, and that's what it's all about. So. Excellent. Okay. Well, what we're going to do in the second half of the program is find out how to make that happen and um, you know I'm, you, I know you'll share a lot with us about that Happy. but um, I've actually been doing some research on you Jennifer uh -oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know um, when I knew that I was interviewing you and knew about your business um, I know that you know doing what you do takes a particular type of person you know whether it be in terms of your character your personality your approaches so in my research about you, I know that you use a tool called Reinvent Then Recommit. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much for asking me about this. This is something that I've been doing in my own businesses. And I've owned a number of different businesses, book publishing, a restaurant catering company, real estate investment trust. I mean, the list goes on and on, in yeah. addition to being a business consultant. One of the most wonderful luxuries about being an entrepreneur and owning your own business is if you don't like what you're doing, you don't have to go very far to talk to your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I do that in the shower sometimes. <laughs> right. So, you know, since who's, you know, who's, if I don't like my schedule, if I have too many things on my schedule, it's only my fault. And, you know, that sounds kind of serious, but the truth is, I do, I have a practice that I've been doing probably, I don't know, on and off for at least 15 years. And it, and what I call it is recommit right. or reinvent and then recommit. Oh. So as a practice, and I would encourage everybody to give this a try, about every six months, I do an inventory of what I'm involved with in my business. And I stop and I think about the tasks and I think the products and the services. I think about the people that I interact with, either that are working for me, that, uh, you know, that I'm affiliate partners with, referral partners, my clients. I mean, I'm doing a, more of a mental inventory than a physical inventory, but I stop and I consider the wholeness of my business. Mm. And I would recommend if you haven't done this before, you know, I've got a lot of practice yes. 
I'd, I'd actually think about writing everything down and just let this be a journaling exercise. You stop and, you know, go care, kind of category by category. You know, how, what do I, how do I feel about the physical space I work in? Okay. How do I feel about the hours that I put into my work and the days that I work? How do I feel about the people who, su- you know, who support the success of this business? And again, that could be a really big umbrella. And I just kind of chunk out the whole thing. And then I look at what still fills me with joy? What's mm-hmm. fun and what's interesting and what do I love? And, you know, I'll give kind of a little caveat. I, I don't love bookkeeping. It's not my love. So I know that that is an essential part to the business. So what I could do is delegate that. You know, that would right. be a good example if I had the finances to do that. Yes. Um, but the truth of the matter is I know that that's an essential part. So even if I don't love the bookkeeping, my solution might be to, to outsource it. But I look at the wholeness. Okay. And then I think, where you know, what do I want to let go of? What could I you know, not care less if I was still doing? Yes. And then what do I want to bring in? And I'll give you a quick example in my own business. So I do this practice twice a year. I just did it on my trip to Hawaii, a great place to relax and think about the next six yes. months. And I did it last year in the very, probably the first week of December. I usually go the, you know, yes. the first week so it doesn't get to the holiday stuff. And I think about what do I want for the next six months of the new year. And last December, I realized that the majority of my time was set was spent sitting in my home office with a headset on talking to clients all over the world. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, except for I don't move around very much. Okay. And as much as some, some of my clients I see over video, I didn't get any hugs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there were some things that were missing. Like, I wasn't actually touching people. Yeah. And my conversations were very focused. You know, I get on the phone. I talk yes. to a client. It's all about them. I support them. And then I get off and talk to them. You know, same thing. Right. So I realized what was missing for me and what I used to do and I really loved was going out and being with people and large groups of people and, you know, having it be exciting and getting to be silly and basically right. – what I was missing was what I called, you know, keynote presentations, corporate training, speaking events. Yes. And so literally I thought, okay, I'm going to redefine my schedule a little bit. I'm going to, you know, if some of my clients are ready to move on, I'll leave some spaces open in my schedule and I'll start carving out enough flexible time so that I can be available for some speaking engagements. Mm. And that's what I re so I I was thinking about doing two things. One was changing the flexibility of the way that I met with my clients, so changing a little bit of my schedule and then pursuing speaking business. And that was something that I could recommit to. It was almost like recommitting to a marriage. Mm. And so I said, for the next six months, these are the two changes that I'm going to make in my business. Right. And yeah. and so here I am in July. Yes. And I can proudly say last month I was at the University of Southern California talking to all of their managers in their hospitality division about um, what I talked to them about customer service. And the month before I was out talking to a whole city, all the employees of a you know local Southern California city talking about values and how they could make a difference. And, you know, know, a couple, you know, before that it was a sales training presentation. So not that it matters, but the whole point is just giving yourself the ability to do a little bit of fine tuning will help you Mm. continue to have joy and fun and excitement in your business. I highly recommend. Yeah. So as you said, it's a tune up really, isn't it? That um, Mm -hmm. leads to greater productivity and efficiency Mm -hmm. because you're focusing on what you love, you know, your, yes, excellent. That's that's a good tip. Um, One that I um, definitely will take on board. So (laughs) in that respect, then, you know, Jennifer Martin, the CEO of Zest um, Business and Consultancy, can you tell me what's a, a typical week like for you? Um, you know, again, because I've been able to create my own schedule, usually Mondays, <laughs> I, I joke about this, Mondays are ladies' choice, but <laughs> considering it's, you know, my business, it's my choice. Um, you know, so on Mondays, I leave myself a lot of flexibility. It, what I have Mondays for is getting caught up on emails, doing any marketing. So, you know, if I'm doing writing of some sort, an article, a blog post, you know, whatever, uh, returning phone calls, 
I can consciously choose if I want to take an appointment that day. Sometimes if I have a potential new client, I'll take that on that day or, you know, it's really, you know, without getting into the wholeness, I, I leave it open. You know, I know that Mondays are the day where I can choose what I'm going to do on Monday. Like this coming Monday, I've been asked to come out and teach a class to, uh, a local organization, a local nonprofit that helps entrepreneurs uh, start their businesses. So I'm going to teach a class on Monday completely by choice because that's fun for me. Right. And then, you know, do a, you know, but it changes from week to week. I have designed my schedule so that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are supremely busy. <laughs> because sometimes on, sometimes on a Monday, I might decide to sleep in or go take a walk in the morning or have a two-hour lunch with a friend. So Mondays are my days. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays are my work days. For the most part, I'm working, doing two things. I'm working with um, small business owners, coaching them over over the telephone, Skype, you know, I use a, a service called Zoom, which I absolutely love for video conferencing. And then I also occasionally have some speaking engagements. Um, I actually lead a local networking group in, in my region because that's fun for me. So once a month I do that. I do networking in the evenings, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not every week, but I try to condense yes. my work week. Um, and this is by choice. So for me, the balance is I don't care if I put in 10 hours days on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because remember, Monday's ladies' choice, and get, guess what happens again on Friday? <laughs> ladies' choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on yeah. Fridays, I have one client uh, in the morning, a regular standing client, and then I usually leave some spaces open in the, in the first part of Friday uh, for new potential clients, sometimes I'll run a group because because I do some different virtual groups throughout the year. And I generally, after 12 o'clock, I don't take any client calls. Mm. I and, love that structure yeah. because um, you've clearly defined the boundaries, yeah. which is what balance is about, isn't it? Exactly. And so I'll just share, this didn't happen overnight and it's not set in stone. Right. So I will use this formula until it, something about it no longer works. Yeah. And then I'll fine tune. And I believe me, over 16 years of, be, of working for myself, I've tried a lot of different things. Yes. But for yes. Me, this is great. If I want to yeah. take off at 12 o'clock on a Friday afternoon and start an early weekend, I can. And conversely, sometimes I'll have. Um, uh, sometimes what I do is if I do, if I have business travel, I'll actually plan to be at a uh, business on a Monday and I travel on a Sunday. So I like being able to have the flexibility mm -hmm. so that everything is a conscious choice. Okay, excellent. That sounds good. Okay. So I'm just going to touch on um, one or two questions about yourself before we move into, you know, a healthy business and a healthy lifestyle. Sure. Um, but you've been in business um, for 15, 16 years, you've said, and mm -hmm. you've owned many small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to know what's um, one, um, and I don't like to use the word failure because I don't believe in failure. <laughs> you know, I, I believe in um, something that happens for us to learn and grow and develop. So mm -hmm. if we say setback, maybe, what's one setback you've had as an entrepreneur and how did you overcome it? What strengths, what were the approaches that mattered for you to overcome? Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. There's, you know, if you can really fra hold the framework that there's not failure, uh, most entrepreneurs, and I'm sure you know this from interviewing a lot of them, you know, they've had, they've tried some things that haven't been a perfect fit or haven't been what others might call a great success. Yes. And my life is no different. Uh, the thing that comes to mind for me probably um, the most is I was working as a business consultant and one of the things that I enjoy doing, like I say, is going out and giving presentations. And I have always been doing uh, classes and groups and things like that on and off. And one of the areas that I absolutely am passionate about is communication. I love teaching people how to get more of what they want, whether that means closing a sale or, you know, having better relationship with their spouse or their children. I mean, it, you know, the, the words we use, how we say things, when we say things, we actually have a lot of control about 
our success in not just getting what we want for the sake of getting what we want, but actually being able to ask for it and everything else. So I was giving... Um, I was giving some group classes and trainings and things like that around some communication. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I, it's all of the spur of the moment because sometimes how that's how entrepreneurs work. Oh, look. (laughs) And then all of a sudden you're running to running down the different road. And so I woke, you know what I mean? So I woke up in the morning. I had this, you know, one morning I had this idea. I had this idea that I should create a, Uh, a booklet in my mind it was going to be called the recipe of me and I was going to take people through a series of questions and the intention was originally I thought in in our personal lives for you know our romantic lives that a lot of times we get into relationship with someone and we change everybody changes Mm. and as time goes by whether it's six months or 16 years our, our partners get to know us, but sometimes we never go back and check back in to see if we would like something different from them. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Um, you know, if, if I met my spouse when I was 22, on my 23rd birthday, a surprise birthday party would have been a great you know, thing to do for me. I got to tell you, being in my 50s now, please don't give me a surprise birthday party now. The best surprise you can do for me on my birthday is just to take me out to dinner. Yes, yes. It's, um... I mean, that's all I need. So what happens is we get in relationship, whether it's in business relationships or personal relationships, and we forget to check back in with one another. So Long story short, I had this idea, my book, my kind of little booklet that I was going to share with people became this opportunity to write a book. And I started getting into the book and I, I had a business partner in the book and um, it just, it kind of took this life of its own and turned a corner and I lost that loving feeling for it about six months in, but the book wasn't completed yet and it hadn't been published yet. Right. And by the time that if anybody's ever written a book, they know that from your inspiration to the point where there's actually a physical book, sometimes that can take two years. Mm, yes. And what ended up happening for me was I started creating this new business around the book and the teachings of the book. But by the time that the book was out and I started going on tour and showing up at the bookstores and doing everything else, I was like the typical entrepreneur. I was already already running down another road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I didn't still believe in the work. I did. But my passion to make offering the services around the content of the book had mostly disappeared at that point. I I was really, you know, I was focusing on working with business owners. Mm. And so I won't say that it was a failed venture. It was a grand experience. But what ended up happening was after, you know, after giving a bunch of lectures and going out to bookstores and, you know, doing the whole thing with the book, I regrouped in one of my reinvent and <laughs> recommits. And I realized I need to get back to doing this other work that I love, which is helping small business owners, you know, right. thrive. Yeah. And so it, for me, you know, I guess in the sense of was it a moneymaker? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I suppose, I mean, uh, <laughs> however, it sounds as if it just reaffirmed to you, you know, the road that you actually need to be on. So it, in a way, it took you back to the purpose, didn't it really? Absolutely. And here's kind yeah. of an ironic thing. So, you know, we talk about, you know, is it a failure? Is it not a failure? So I didn't make a lot of money with that venture. Um, but what I did get is I did get an opportunity to have some collaboration. And I did, you know, I was an author of a book. Awesome. Uh, and yes. um, so what's happened since then, remember, I went back to, you know, business consulting again. And what's happened recently, I think the book, i I, you know, it's kind of funny, you kind of block things. I think the book the book was about 10, 11 years ago, roughly. Okay. And um, what's happened since then is I've circled back around, and it's really been interesting. I've started teaching some of the work from the book again. Oh. And what, I'm, what I've been doing in my life is kind of morphing it into how does this work uh, support biz- people in business. Right. And so the ironic thing was everything that I created was still very valuable. Yes. It just 
it's taken a while for me to find a place for it again. Yeah. And I just gave a, I just gave a, uh, a training two days ago using work that I had created for the book. Right. And I thought, yes. okay, awesome. So, <laughs> I actually sh share that experience because there are concepts that I had in mind and I actually, you know, wrote about them and put them down on paper. And mm. um, nothing came of them at the time, but I've recently been going through some of those things and I'm thinking, wow, you know, and I'm actually using some of these, um, these new concepts in different initiatives and mm. they um, work um, on a different way around and in a different way. So yeah. I do understand that. And actually, sometimes I wonder if it is that we're just before our time, really. So mm. the thing we create is not ready essentially for then, but it's created so we can go back to it in a different way. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I say to my clients, actually, some of my clients is actually um, get yourself an ideas book. Just write mm -hmm. down all the ideas that you've got because you might not work on them now, but somewhere down the line they might turn into projects, you know. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. But um, excellent, Jennifer. So what we're going to do is take um, a brief break and we're going to come back. You've started to talk about uh, having a relationship with your business mm -hmm. and we're going to explore exactly what that means, a health the relationship with business so okay. let's um just um take a little breather and then we'll be back in a few seconds think big for a moment if you could create your best life how would this look what if in just 30 minutes you had a plan of action to get closer to your dream make the impossible possible and claim your free session today Visit www.satellitelifecoaching.com now. Usually, we struggle through life alone, with outdated beliefs and self-sabotaging actions that bring the same results. How different would it be if you had a personal success coach who helped you make the shift and create a plan for happiness? You will fearlessly align your values, achieve important goals, and reframe your perspective when you have coaching with me. Email Rebecca at info at satellitelifecoaching.com. Book your free discovery session and change your life. Welcome to the Coaching Lounge. You're here with Rebecca Gordon and Jennifer Martin. Jennifer is the CEO of Zest Business Consulting. What a fantastic name, Zest. And she's here telling us about um, her um, experience of a business, being a business owner. In fact, being a, an owner of many businesses in her 16 years of um, entrepreneurship. And we're now going to touch on what it means to have a healthy relationship with your business. So, Jennifer, what are some of the essential habits that successful business owners have from your experience? Mm. Mm. So, you know, I find that there's some things that uh, the business owners who are having a little bit more traction, you know, moving towards their goals, there's certain things that I'm finding that they do that maybe not everybody else does. And it's, I think it's kind of a secret to business success. Okay. Uh, but what I noticed that they're doing a little bit differently is what I call the win, 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 win. Okay, that's a lot of wins. <laughs> I, I don't really, call it, I don't really yes. call it that. But you, the idea is to create a business that is good for you, good for your business, good for your clients, good for your vendors, good for your staff or the people who support you, and here's where the secret sauce comes in. Creating a business that provides something that's mm -hmm. greater than just making money, mm -hmm. that actually touches on being 
you know, for the greater good, whether that's your community or a special interest group or who knows what. I like um, an organization called Charity Water that helps bring clean drinking water to the world. Okay. And so that seems to be this special recipe. And I won't say that it's easy, but I encourage people to stop and think about at every single step of, you know, of the process here, does everyone come out feeling positive about what we're creating or what we're offering our products and services and like I say that's the kind of the magic there the secret Mm. and I love that because you know it is how we feel about something isn't it so Mm -hmm. how our customers feel how the vendors feel is what about what you're doing you know the business owners doing is what's going to bring the business whether they have this positive feeling about it so i love that i love i love that so how does someone tell if their business is healthy what are some of the um, signals (laughs) yeah and i use kind of healthy with those two little quote marks because you know it's like it's a therapy thing but i you know to be honest i i encourage people it's one of the first questions i ask them if they come to me and usually people don't hire a business coach unless something's not working and the first thing that i want to know is what part of it isn't working and so i'll ask them you know, just a couple simple questions. And the very first one is, if your business was a person, would you call it a healthy relationship? Mm, that's a great and question. And in your isn't business, it? yeah, do you give, 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 give? And does it just demand your time and your money and your energy? Is it taking, taking, taking? I mean, if we thought of a person like that, we probably would, you know, we probably wouldn't stay with them very long. Well, I think they'd be ditched somewhere along the line. (laughs) Right. So that's the first thing I ask people is, you know, if your business was a person, would you call it a healthy relationship? And then the second question is, does your business suck the life out of you or does it give you more life? And you don't have to go any further than that. Right, <laughs> Usually absolutely, that's yes, going to give you a real yes. clear picture. So, so, so on that note then, can I just ask, I mean, I know um, I'm not asking for any details here, but mm-hmm. I'm just interested to know with the clients um, that, you come, that come to you, the business owners, what are some of the main themes relating to challenges that they face in their business? Oh, goodness. You know, it seems like there's, there's usually kind of two main things. It's either that they are not generating the, the either I'll say generating the type of money that they that they want or need or that they just have no life that you know their business is just taken over and there's there's just you know they're they're working too many hours and things like that and so that's where I start you know with this whole idea of the relationship if you know the one of the really this is what I love about business well I love a lot of things about business but if you or I are in a relationship with a human being and let's say that human being I'll I'll just pretend pretend I'm married to a man and that man comes home from work and he takes his shoes off at the front door and then he drops his briefcase and then his jacket goes over the corner of the couch and it looks like one of those ads that you know someone's undressing their way into Mm -hmm. the you know into the bedroom but you never get like a handsome hunt and naked a handsome uh, naked hunk at the end what you just get is a pile of clothing all over your house Mm -hmm. so in my scenario let's say I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so I, what will happen in my relationship with, you know, with my husband is that um, I will ha- come to have an expectation that he's just dirty and messy and this is who he is. And guess what? If he decides one day to change his behavior, I might unconsciously hold him still to being messy because every time he does anything I have already branded him as this messy creature Mm. and I'm put him in this box of you're an annoying mess maker but here's what's different in our business okay so if I decide in my business that I don't want to work 60 hours a week my business is like cool awesome great see you when you come So we have the capacity to create change in our businesses as the business owners by simply taking action. Mm. 
and making new choices. And that's why I have people start with identifying where they're, you know, where they're at with their business. Is it healthy? Because if it's not healthy, guess who gets to make a change? Okay. And you're not going to get any of the pushback that you would from a human being. Right. The business is just going to be ready and willing to, you know, to support you in doing what you need to do. Uh huh. So, I mean, we, we can actually become very attached to our businesses. You know, it's like an entity, a baby that we've created and we just get so used to. And, you know, I'm probably being quite personal here, <laughs> you know. But um, <laughs> so so you've said we need to take action. There are lots of practical things that we can do. So let's just think about perhaps um, generally, you know, your client base. Um, if someone's not generating um, the money that they want, and in all fairness, this is probably, you know, something that, uh, well, I'm not going to generalize to say a lot, but, you know, some business owners can relate to in the current climate, in the time of austerity, etc., and the, the, the cutbacks we're certainly having over here in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of the practical things, when actually it's about the bread and butter, it's about the food on the table and your business, you know, that's what it's about, that's why you're doing it. So what do you, how do you coach people around that? What, you know, in terms of the practical realities that they need to face up to? So I'm going to give you my two kind of biggest tips in in business, my two biggest secrets for business owners. And the first one is there's, you know, there's making money, and then there's keeping the money you make, what hits your, you know, your net profits. Yeah. So the first thing, you know, I tell people, I can help you bring more money in the door. But before we do that, we want to make sure that you're keeping as much as your money as possible. So the very first thing that I have all business owners do is take a look at the money going out. Mm-hmm. And actually take a realistic look at what you are spending money on in your business. And I have to tell you, every single business owner tells me, oh, I can't make any cuts. There's, you know, nothing I can do and everything. And I tell them, if you were acting like the house was on fire, I guarantee you that you would be able to create some changes. So that's the first thing that I have them do is focus on what changes, even if they're minute or very gentle, can you make on a regular basis to lower your overhead so that you can keep more of the money you make? Then, I, then I'd then i be willing to go ahead and help them generate more money. So my second tip is if people tell me that, um, oh, you, this is what I hear all the time. Oh, you know, I need more money, but I can't figure out how to do it because I don't have any more time because I'm working, you know, you know the whole yeah. cycle. Mm-hmm. It's it's like they don't have the time to do something different. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case with somebody, you think you don't have the time to do something different to get more money or find more clients, then I would have you take a look at what the heck are you doing? Right, yeah. I mean, it's owning it up could, to the truths. Exactly. But when it comes to your marketing efforts... There's this big idea that we have 1,500 things that we have to do. We have to place the ad in this place and we have to, you know, write a blog post once or twice a week or whatever we do. We have to be on social media in 15 different places, you know, 24 times a day. And and what happens is our energy is absolutely diverted with all these things that we have to do. And here's where the secret comes in. If someone says to me, how do I make more money? I say, go back and think about the last five to 10 clients you had that were ideal. The ones who got you. They were so excited about working with you. There was practically drool coming out of their mouths. Every time you worked with them, you felt uplifted. You wanted to just hug them. You know, everything about working together was a great match. You would take every single client just like them. So if you can go back and think about those clients, five to ten of them, and then stop to think about how did they find out about me or my product or my service? Did they come in through your website? Were they from a client referral? You know, whatever the case is, did they come in from an advertisement that you're placing? Did they meet you at a speaking event, a networking? However you met them. If you look at five to ten, you're most likely going to see some trends. 
I have never had anyone tell me, oh, every single one of them came from a different channel. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens is you're going to find some tra your trends. Out of your five to ten, probably a third or better of them are going to come from the same one or two places. Okay. So as you're explaining this, Jennifer, and this is the, those are great tips you've shared. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just envisioning, envisioning um, that we really do need to stop for a moment in the business and just look at it objectively because mm -hmm. we can get so caught up in it that it's like a whirlwind and it's going round and everything so fast and we just get, you know, we, we spin around with it. But really mm -hmm. we need to, you know, find the time to take time out of it, away from it, you know, look at it as an entity um, so that we can do some work on it. Um, Absolutely. Which, which is great. So thank you so much for sharing those fabulous tips. And what we are going to do is take a very quick break. And when we return, we are going to talk about um, business from a spiritual perspective. We will be back in a few seconds. Relax in the coaching lounge and engage with compelling motivational speakers. Be prepared to transform your inner world to shape your outer world through empowering discussions. Tune into thecoachinglounge.co.uk now. Usually, we struggle through life alone, with outdated beliefs and self-sabotaging actions that bring the same results. How different would it be if you had a personal success coach who helped you make the shift and create a plan for happiness? You will fearlessly align your values achieve important goals, and reframe your perspective when you have coaching with me. Email Rebecca at info at satellitelifecoaching.com. Book your free discovery session and change your life. Jennifer, I'm really loving this interview. And, <laughs> I, <laughs> and this um, next bit um, is something, I mean, we only have a short time left now, but I'm hoping that we can just tease out some um, principles of great spiritual practices mm. that work well within business. Can you share um, what those might be with us, please? Absolutely. So uh, the the one thing that I've been teaching people, I've been doing this for years, and I was a number one salesperson with some very large organizations. So, you know, in as a salesperson before doing other things in my life, uh, I was able to achieve the top marks. And I think that a part of that had to do with what I call the inner game, that spiritual side of us. And I had a practice, and I encourage everybody to find their practice. I call it being open for business. Mm -hmm. And for me, being open for business was thinking consciously at the beginning of every business day that I was open and ready for m my people the clients who were, you know, the, that were looking for the product or service that I had to offer and that I was the right person to represent that to them, is my intention was at every beginning of the day that they would find me. And to be honest, even to this day, I get calls from somebody and I'll say to them, oh, how did you hear me? And they, they'll say, oh, I read that article that you wrote in so-and-so magazine. And I'll think, oh, I'll, I'll say to them, oh, okay, and the truth is I'll, I've never written that article. Or they'll say, uh, I heard you make a presentation at this place, blah, 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 which could be, you know, 4,000 miles from my home. And I'll say, okay, great. <laughs> and the truth <laughs> of the matter is I was never there. Right. So there's some kind of magic yes. that's been happening where people find me, they connect with me, they want me, I'm the right person for them, but they've connected to me in the most mysterious, amazing way. And I think it's related to this commitment. So... The what I, you know, I'll share my practice. People can, you can use it for your own or you can create a, ri a ritual for yourself. But at the very beginning of every business day, if you are open for business, then have something that you do to let people know that you're ready and open for business. And then at, just as important at the end of your business day, make sure you, you know, you turn off the light switch or flip the, the open side into closed and, and be closed for the day so that you can have some balance. Yes. And for me, the ritual is imagining this glowing ball of light at the base of my spine. And I set the intention that this ball of light is going to magnetically attract my people. 
And then I just let it flow right up through the top of my head. And I imagine it go way up into the sky. And I don't know if you remember, we call them in the States like a Hollywood light or a Batman light. They're these huge oh, yes. kind of yeah. tunnels of lights that go, you know, just yeah. way up into in, into the stars. And then they start slowly swinging from one side to the other and forward and back. I think everybody's kind of seen those every once in a while. Well, that's what my ball of light does. Okay. It's just this beacon that is way up there that's swinging to all sides. And my feeling is that no matter where my clients are, they're going to follow the light and they're going to find me. And it, and for me, this ritual works. And I always tell people, yep, you might not understand it and you might not believe in it, but try it for 30 days and then you decide if it's something you want to keep doing. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll have many people trying that. It sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, fun. yeah, I mean, just speaking to you, your energy is, as per your business name, you know, Zest. So I can well imagine that you do magnetically attract um, because mm -hmm. just because of your, your very nature. And that is one of the things that happens when we do balance ourselves in business is that, we you know, we're, we're not burned out, we're not sapped. We've actually got the energy to radiate, which is yep. what draws the client. So, um, I mean, really, you're walking the talk, aren't you? You know, I try. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you are just, absolutely just like every just like everyone does. You know, I'm a human yeah. being. I have good days and bad days, but I actually have a lot more intention. And yes. over the years, I've tried a lot of things. So, thank you for for that fine compliment. It's what I intend to do every day. Fantastic. And um, just as we're finishing now, um, I just want you to share with us um, what else you've noticed that works for business owners who are really thriving. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, I think um, having a good sense of time management and eliminating distraction, and that might look like something that's different for every single human being. But, you know, this, this is not like, hey, just work smarter, not, you know, work, yeah, work smarter, not harder. It's something bigger than that. It's, it's taking an inventory you know, like I say, the reinvent and recommit, but take an inventory of what you're actually spending your time doing. And I would encourage people to do that about every four to six months. And make sure that you're taking advantage. We live in this grand uh, world right now where technology is literally evolving at the speed of light. And there's so many tools that are available to us. And I encourage people just to stay up to date with what's going to work for you so that you can do one thing. And the one thing is focusing on the actions that are going to get you the traction towards your goals. Superb. Focus on the actions that are going to get you the traction on your goals. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very powerful. Okay. Yeah. So, Jennifer, um, I know that you've got um, a special offer for our listeners, but before we share that um, with the listeners, can you please just, um, you know, declare how we can find you? Because people may want to connect with you, you know, find out about your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the best way to stay in, in contact with me is to sign up for my newsletter or just, you know, go through my website to email me. And uh, I have one of those great little shortened email addresses if, if people just want to sign up for a newsletter. It's the bit.ly address, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Zest with a Z, Zest, Biz, B-I-Z, newsletter. So it's bit.ly dot B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Zest Biz Newsletter. And otherwise, you know, the easiest way to get me if, you know, if you're in the, if you're in the States, uh, you can call me 805-669-7160. If you're on Skype, it's Jennifer Martin Business Coach. You can shoot me a note. And otherwise, visit my website at zestbusinessconsulting.com. Excellent. And I'd love to hear, you know, to be honest, I'd love to hear if anyone heard something that they enjoyed and they find that it's helpful in their lives. I would invite them to connect with me through Facebook. And I have a web, you know, a Facebook presence under Zest Business Consulting on Facebook. And it would be great to hear, you know, if something was helpful for someone. Right. And Twitter? 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. All the social media. Yes. Uh, it's uh, my Twitter handle is Zest Biz Coach. B I Z Zest Business Coach. Just Zest Biz Coach. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, Jennifer, um, I'm interested to know um, what's next for you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. There's. You know, I'm always doing what I think are fun and interesting things, and some people, other people, find them fun and interesting too. And one of the things that I've got coming up is a uh, a new group that I'm putting together to help hold people accountable towards their goals. And it is a group that meets. I do this in small groups. It's a group that meets weekly for 30 minutes and I usually keep these this is not like a group program this is something very intimate usually no more than six to eight people we come together for 30 minutes a week we very quickly check in about how our progress is going what we'd like to commit to do in the next you know period of time and then we all help hold one another accountable to actually getting some things done and that way if you know you've got a lot of business owners all over the world working out of their home offices or out of a Starbucks and this way they can have a community on a regular basis that can actually see them <laughs> and yeah. notices if they're doing work and then as a part of that what I do once a month with with I have a number of groups like this is we come together and we actually do a video conference so we can see one another and we come together for a two-hour chunk and during that two hours we first start by going around quick introductions and we let everybody know during the next hour this is what we're going to accomplish. So after introductions, we literally set the timer. We all know what we're going to work on during that hour. And then we come back and we share what our progress is. Mm. And it's amazing how much people d get done when the cameras are on. And there's a lot of people who can see them working. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do this. And, and my special offer for your listeners is normally, I keep this extremely affordable. Normally, this group is only 99 US dollars per month okay. okay, and I will make an offer for your listeners for the first month to come in for half price wow that's and an it's, amazing offer yeah and it's so it's one of the ways that I supplement all of my clients with giving them a little bit of extra support on a regular basis but if uh, I generally have groups starting uh, I'd say about every roughly about two months a new group will start maybe two to three months wow. and so if someone's interested just have them give me a quick email or a shout out and I'll let them know what the times are you know coming up available and I'm happy to give them that first month at half price that's fantastic thank you so much um, I do appreciate that and I know the listeners do also um, Jennifer um, but it's been a great interview and the time has flown by so quickly <laughs> I know it's been fun yeah and um, you You've said so much that's um, you know so profound and so meaningful and also very practical you know mm. that people can take on board and implement sooner rather than later and you know sometimes there are conversations that we need to hear you know the, the, the honest discussions um, which I think you've touched on very much today in terms of some of the questions to ask about your business and how mm -hmm. your relationship is with your business and you know if it's not the way you'd like it to be what you need to do about it or what you're going mm -hmm. to do about it so um, I'm exceptionally grateful for your presence thank you so much I know that your time is very valuable and um, I'm very um, honoured that you've shared it with me today Jennifer thank oh, you for thank joining you. me in the coaching lounge thank you the coaching lounge take your place in the coaching lounge be inspired by discussions with motivational guests compelling speakers key people of influence and models of success. Learn unique processes, strategies and tips that will transform your life. Tune into previous episodes on www.thecoachinglounge.co.uk. Like our page on Facebook via The Coaching Lounge. Follow us on Twitter at Satellite Coach. Thank you for joining your host, Rebecca Gordon, in the Coaching Lounge. Tune in, relax, engage, and transform your life now. now.